reaction to the possibility of Dr. Kaiser being terminated over her vaccination status is Amy Reichert from Reopen San Diego. Amy, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Of course. So Rafer Weigel and I, we had interviewed Tracy Monday and Tuesday, but prior to those interviews, you had introduced us to the story about Dr. Kaiser facing termination. It's just upsetting everyone across the county. Dr. Kaiser has been a math professor for 19 years. She has her, her BA, her teaching credential. She has two bachelor's degrees, a master's degree, and a doctorate of education. She never thought this was actually going to happen. She was in compliance for two years when the pandemic hit. She was teaching online remotely, had her religious exemption approved, and then she was placed on administrative leave. She's been on leave for seven months. So what happened at the hearing on Tuesday? On Tuesday, Dr. Kaiser had her Skelly hearing. It's just a formality. This is where she's able to go in front of uh, the district and plead her case. So there's been some great developments this week that I can't wait to share with you. But what went wrong with Dr. Kaiser's experience though? Because she was in compliance for two years and then she had her exemption approved. And then they say, okay, well, sorry, we can't no longer accept this. We're gonna place you on leave. So she's been waiting for seven months for this hearing. We spoke with Dr. Kaiser over the weekend. She's actually joining us at nine o'clock hour. And she says there's some good news. So tell us what happened. So it's like a scene out of a movie. Uh, there's been an energy shift this past week. Thank you to KUSI for covering this story. People at the highest level of the district are breaking ranks. They're advocating for Dr. Kaiser. She has an excellent record academically. She loves her students. And it's all because of viewers of KUSI who've been calling the chancellor's office, former students. And now what we're seeing is People who work for the district who have everything to lose are now speaking up for her. So it's been a great week. Well, KSI has been in touch with the San Diego Community College District. We have learned that last month, three teachers were terminated for not wanting to get the COVID-19 vaccine, even with their exemptions approved. Now, four staff members are facing termination. So those four staff members were supposed to be on the agenda this week, March 2nd. What happened? So on Friday, myself and the faculty, we were waiting for the agenda to be posted. And then late Friday night, we got news that right now, they are not scheduled uh, for the next board meeting. This is amazing. This is a huge development. This means that the district is taking a step back. They're rethinking this horrible policy in light of the California state of emergency ending on the 28th. This makes sense. So this is a small win for us. We're hoping that next week the district will make the announcement that they are standing down and they are protecting the civil rights of their own employees. So Dr. Kaiser, she was one of the four that was supposed to be attending that board meeting on March 2nd and she was expecting to be terminated or hear her status on March 2nd. But what's interesting about this whole experience is that the COVID-19 vaccine mandate has ended for students fall of 2022. Mm -hmm. That's the majority of the college population, students. So students don't have to be vaccinated, but staff does. So as Dr. Kaiser was explained to KUSI on Monday and Tuesday with Rafer Wagle and I, that you can enroll in a class as a student, not be vaccinated, but the teacher has to be vaccinated. So one teacher has to be vaccinated, but say for example, 40 students don't have to, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. And right now what we're seeing, the numbers from the district, about 36% of the student population is vaccinated. But uh, the faculty, 95% of them are vaccinated. So right now what we're seeing with Dr. Kaiser, and you'll be interviewing her later, and I'm so excited. She is an amazing woman. She's pregnant. Uh, there's no reason for the district to hold her to this ridiculous double standard in light of them dropping the student mat. Uh, mandate right now. Well, what's upsetting is that her hearing was supposed to be two weeks ago. She was so stressed out. She's at high risk pregnancy and she had to postpone her hearing, which was this past Tuesday. She says that this is just too much for her. The fact that she's pregnant, she's losing her job, her passion of 19 years. She says not right. So 
she's not going to stop fighting for her passion and her career. But also I want to, so yesterday you and I were talking, Dr. Kaiser and I were talking, looking at the whole system of governance of education. You know, you have K through 12, which is the Department of Education, which governs K through 12. Then you have the UC system, the CSU system. Then you have the California Community College School District, which is governed by the Board of Governors, right? We have this on the screen, which I wanted to share with our viewers. So this is interesting, because keep in mind, we have reached out to the Chancellor's Office for the San Diego Community College School District. According to the California State Auditor, the Board of Governors for the California Community Colleges, they set policy and provide guidance to its colleges, which are organized into 72 college districts. The community college districts have a locally elected board of trustees charged with the operations of the local colleges. So from what I take from this is that the Board of Governors, they elect the chancellor and they set policies. We need to get answers from the chancellor of why are they mandating staff and not students? Yeah. When we're, like, as you mentioned, they're lifting the state of emergency on Tuesday. There is no question that the district is acting illegally. Dr. Kaiser is protected under Title VII of the 1964 Civil Rights Act. And then what you just mentioned, the district does not have the authority to have a vaccine mandate for its professors. And here is the great twist in the story that I wanted to share. So right now, they've been taken off of the agenda for firing, but you know who's on the agenda for review? The chancellor. The chancellor who's really? been rationalizing this illegal mandate is the one that's gonna be up for review March 2nd. So that is on the agenda for March 2nd. Mm -hmm. Wow. Also, I want to mention with Los Angeles Community College District, that is the largest community college system in the state, right? They're still operating as they were during that pandemic, meaning those professors who had their exemptions approved, they're, st they're able to teach remotely still. Mm -hmm. So why can't San Diego professors do that? Los Angeles, the largest system in the state, they're able to teach online, have their exemptions approved, everything's fine. So I was sharing that with Dr. Kaiser. I'm like, well, if the district were to ask you, okay, we're not gonna terminate you, would you be willing to come back and teach remotely and have your class online? And she says, yes, that's what I want. I, was, I did it for two years, I was in compliance. She didn't get the vaccine, right? She tested weekly, she did her job, she's still in touch with her students, everything was fine. Why can't she continue doing what she was doing? We're just asking for the district to protect its own employees' civil rights and to follow the science. And right now on the 28th, this California COVID state of emergency is going to end. And so it's really clear with the district already dropping the student mandate that the next right step for them is to also drop the faculty mandate. So there's no reason why Dr. Kaiser can't teach in person as well. I don't even know what that even means as far as the state dropping at state of emergency. I was actually looking online. It's pretty vague. It doesn't say what exactly is going to happen when that emergency is lifted. <laughs> And, and it's ironic that you can even schedule the end of a state of emergency, but it is what it is. And normally California is a leader in the nation. And what's happening is California has really painted itself into the corner and it's way behind other states. Other states have been open way before California and have ended these unconstitutional mandates. All right, well, Amy Riker, thank you for being here with us and fighting and helping Dr. Tracy Kaiser in this, and I know you're going to be staying here with us because Dr. Kaiser will be joining us in the nine o'clock hour. Amy, thank you. All right, we'll see.